ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اهلا ومرحبا بكم ولكم Brothers and sisters to Pillars at Dar Al-Qur'an here in Arlington, Texas, Friday, rainy day. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us and reward us and guide us and forgive us. Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen. Our topic, Ittaqi al-Maharim, Takun A'bad al-Nas. Last time we talked about part of this topic, which is part of the hadith where the Prophet Sallallahu said, stay away from haram, you will be the most devout worshiper or devout Muslim. Stay away from haram, you will be the most devout person. We said scholars said why we did not talk about worships like stay away from haram you will be the most devout how come we didn't say worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or fulfill the basics that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands you you will be the most uh, devout well the scholar said because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala legislated ibadah like Salah, Zakat, Salam, and Hajj. So it gives you an energy or spiritual energy that will help you stay away from haram. Meaning, when you do the obediences, this gives you strength and connects you with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then it will be easier on you to stay away from haram. We mentioned before that majority of haram is desired by the majority of the people. And that is the test in it. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us don't do something and we don't like it anyway, where is the test? I tell you not to smoke, you say I hate smoking. So what, what test is this? But I tell him don't smoke and he loves smoking, then that's a test. Now, we have so many tests and you may have tests that's easy for you, but not easy for others. And you may have worships that's easy for you, not easy for others. Like I know a family relative that fasting is extremely hard. They do anything else, but Qiyam al-Layl, no problem, anything. But fasting is like they try, they try, they try. It's just not too easy. So Maharim is always hard. So you need some spiritual power and energy and connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why if you find a person, his faith is weak, you find them falling in sins so easily. In fact, they don't care for it too much. They might do the sin and laugh. Or, oh, I'm sorry. You know, it's like, oh, just uh, no big deal. And Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu an, he said that when I do a little sin, I feel like it is like a mountain about to collapse on my head. And most of the people nowadays, if you do a mountain of sin, you feel like it's a fly, that if you do this to it, it fly away, it's no big deal. But that is because the connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is weak. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ تَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ Salah keeps you away from indecency. How does it keep you in decency? Because every time you stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you connect with Him and it reminds you of Him 
then when you want to commit a sin, you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and keeps you away from that sin. So that is the reason why when they mention stay away from the haram because it is already assumed ibadat and worship is already there. Doesn't make sense for someone to say, I, uh, no, no, I don't drink alcohol. I don't do anything haram, but do you pray? No. Do you fast? No. You don't find a person like that. But you may find a person who will fast and not pray. Why? Because it's embarrassing to eat when everybody is fasting. It's not even fun. Can you imagine you're eating in the house and everybody else is fasting? And everybody is throwing comments? What are you doing? What is this? You're disgusting. It's like, uh, forget it. I don't want to eat. So they do that. But is this... It's bad, of course, if you fast and not pray. But what would you tell that person? Would you tell him it's useless? Of course not. You, what are you losing when someone fasts? Nothing. Is there a chance for the fasting person to get better? Oh yeah. He's doing such a good obedience. Sooner or later, maybe someone will advise him. Maybe one of the prayers that he prays, maybe a taraweeh prayer, maybe uh, he's gonna stand with people when they pray. I mean, he's not gonna sit and watch them. All of these things eventually will bring him back. Therefore, if you see someone doing obedience, which is really useless if you don't pray, reward-wise, because the first thing you'll be questioned the Day of Judgment about your prayer. If you don't have it, then you don't have an account. But I would not tell that person, because I want him to do good and expose himself to good. Sooner or later, inshallah, he will come back, because if you are controlling yourself for 15 hours from food and drink, I'm sure it would be easier for you to stand for five minutes and pray. Therefore, we encourage them. Also, haram, we said that we desire it naturally. Look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala referred to fornication. He said, Wala taqrabu zina. Do not get near committing fornication. Now, committing that indecency is haram. Why? Because it is a test. Is it desired? Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made that love between men and women for the purpose of having children and for the purpose of continuing worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the main goal for it. But of course people may not do it for that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it natural for a man to love a woman and for women to love men or attracted to one another. This is natural. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put rules for it. He said this can be done in marriage. That's the only way it can be done. Therefore, anything that may lead to it is prohibited. Lustful look, touch, mix, all of that is prohibited. Why is it prohibited? Because it leads to it. Well, how often does it lead to it? Even if it's one time in a million incidents, in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is too much. Because people here look at the repetition of the sin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at no sin. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cut the easiest thing that may lead to it, which is looking. So he said subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is haram. Now, shaitan knows that you are interested and each one is interested in the other and this attraction is there shaitan knows that well therefore he comes and he starts inciting and that's why the prophet sallallahu said when the woman leaves the house 
يَسْتَشْرِفُ هَالشَّيْطَانِ Shaitan comes and waits for her and he start whispering to her. He would whisper to her to dress better, to look good, to show some hair, to, to walk differently, to talk in a certain way, to attract the other uh, gender or, 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 the, or men. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also for, for, for that attraction, he put the love in men to look at women and the love in women to attract men to look at them. Yani, uh, I could say maybe, yani, uh, of, of course, women do look, but not like men look. So it is as interesting for women to attract men to look at them the same way men do that. And that is why you find a lot of people against hijab and against modesty. I'm talking about, in particular, men. Why? Because they like looking. Women don't know that. But even if they know that, they agree with them. Why? Because they like them to look at them. I'm talking about those who are not adhering to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, a righteous person knows that this attraction is there and knows that it is haram. Therefore, even though the love is there, faith controls you to stay away from it. So the man would lower his gaze and the woman would lower her gaze and not dress provocatively so men would not look at her. And when one man says, just to show the righteousness of the furry, he said, whenever I see a woman wearing perfume, I hold my breath so she will not get punished. Did you get it? How? Why? Why he holds his breath? He doesn't smell the perfume. Okay, and what happens if he smells it? He gets a sin, and he gets attracted as well. He gets or she gets? She gets a sin, and he gets attracted as well. He gets a sin, and she gets a sin for wearing it outside because it's prohibited to wear outside. Wait, he gets a sin? Come on, of course he gets a sin. Now, he doesn't get a sin if he just happened to pass by or she passed by and he smelled it. But if he smelled it the first time, then he intended to smell it again, then he will get the sin. Similar to looking. The first look, if you don't intentionally do it, and you see the haram, you turn your head. You're forgiven. Second look, you count. Same thing here. Tayyip. <laughs> Yusuf alayhi salam was tested with that. And we said the test was that was extremely hard because it was attraction from the woman and she is asking for it and she prepared for it and she owns him and they are alone and there is no suspicion. No one would suspect because they, they, he's her slave. His fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not only that, his connection with Allah and begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help him control himself is what saved him. He immediately told her, Ma'ad Allah. Yani, I seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is like when the shaitan is whispering to you, like you get angry and you know anger is from the shaitan, you say, A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim. So you're seeking refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the shaitan. And he said, Ma'ad Allah, meaning I seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from committing zina or committing the indecent act with her. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected him. So this story of Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam captivates so many people. You put yourself in that position and you see the dignity of Prophet Yusuf and the strong faith of Prophet Yusuf and how strong the temptation was and he controlled himself 
and he begged Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help and he succeeded it yani it, it's it's a story that leaves you with tears you, you just you just can't help but cry and it imprints in your heart to do the same thing if that happens to you like prophet yusuf alayhi salam so it inspires you with this strong faith to be like him sallallahu alayhi wasallam and that's why only a person who fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does that and control himself from that and protect himself from that and believes in that. Yani people whose faith are not too much, they would argue with you, oh, what do you mean by looking, you know, we are just friends, okay, then uh, what do you do when you go to the store? And uh, then they start giving you some silly argument that as if we're supposed to walk and with our eyes closed and they know that we don't mean that but you know when you want to be silly you start doing that that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said something uh, I mean the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he told us that seven people will be in the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the day of judgment and you probably wonder why what's the the significance of being in the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the sun will be one mile from the head. How many miles now? I think 93 million kilometers. 93 million, and then in the afternoon, you cannot bear it. Imagine when it's one mile above your head. And that's why you have people standing in their sweat. How can you stand in your sweat? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can do it. The sweat comes from you. It drenches earth. Earth doesn't take anymore. Start to rise. Just like it rains. When it rains and saturated, it starts to puddle. And it tries according to your sins. How much sins you have? That's how much you sweat. Some people to their ankle. Some people will be standing to their knee. Some people to their hips. Some people to their shoulders. Some people barely can breathe. During that time, those people that the Prophet ﷺ said will not be under the sun in the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yani this sun would not affect them. One of those people is a man where a beautiful woman, prestigious and beautiful and rich, asked him for the indecency, for zina, and he said, I fear Allah. He will be in the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the reward for it, so huge, it shows you how sinful it is if you commit it. So the reward is big if you don't, obviously. The punishment is big if you do. And that is the proportionality in this word and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that and people even the major people based on that they look at a righteous person that's I'm talking general people they look at a righteous person in situations like that simple situations they watch a righteous person let's say a man in the presence of women if he looks what do they say? Righteous and no righteous people, look at him. And he calls himself Sheikh, or he is a righteous person. Look at him. And the same thing with women. They watch them, the same thing. The way they dress, they connect it with faith. She is the one who is memorizing the Quran, or she is the one who gives lectures, look how she dressed, look at her hijab, look how she mixes and all of that. Why? Because 
they are like a major in the, in, in the uh, measurement in the sight of people that simple things like that they should not do. If you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yani, uh, attracted my attention one time the interview with the Shaykh and the uh, lady who was interviewing him was yani, decked out, not hijab, nothing. So she was asking him, talking to him, and he was like this. And he answers, he's answering her. And the interview took almost half an hour. So she told him, I have been talking to you for the past half an hour. You did not look at me once. He told her, well, I am ordered by Allah to lower my gaze. So I did. And you were ordered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to dress modest and wear the hijab and you did it. So I chose to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You chose to disobey him. That's same thing I did one time. Uh, telemarketing called me and they said, oh, we have credit card and such. This is bank of such and such and we have credit card for you. And, and I said, I'm sorry, I don't deal with interest. They said, oh, uh, we have, uh, I have some uh, brother Muhammad work here. He, he never said that. And I said, well, that's why Allah created heaven and hell. <laughs> I mean, just because he, he doesn't do it, that doesn't mean I do it. Uh, different instance, uh, insurance. Uh, I said, no, thank you. I'm insured. And he said, oh, what company? I said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, oh, that's a good company. Astaghfirullah. <laughs> Sa'id ibn al-Musayyab. Sa'id ibn al-Musayyab yaqul, ma ya'isa shaytanu min shay illa atahu min qibal al-nisa. Any time the shaitan wants to deviate a person and he fails, he comes to him from the side or the angle of women. What does that mean, Ya Al Hussein? Yeah, and the shaitan will start whispering to him and intensifying his whispers in situations where when women are present. Because he knows this is the easiest avenue to deviate men and women. Because as I mentioned, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created strong attraction for the purpose of continuing the generation worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and having children. Also, Al-Hasan al-Basri al -Basri said, Al-Hasan al-Basri said, ما ضربت ببصري ولا نطقت بلساني ولا بطشت بيدي ولا نهضت على قدمي حتى أنظر. He said, I never looked and I never spoke and I never hit and I never stand on my feet until I see. يعني reflect before I do those. أعلى طاعة أنا Am ala masiya. Am I doing or what I'm going to do? Is it obedient, obeying, or is it disobeying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Fa in kana ta'a If it is obedience, then I do. Like if I want to look, if I open my eyes, is this obeying Allah or I'm going to see something haram? Then based on that, I open or don't open. The same thing with the rest. And he said, when I know it is obedience, then I do what I need to do. And if it is disobedience, I hold off. Then the scholar said, فَلَا تَتَحَرَّكْ إِلَّا بِدَلِيلٍ Do not move unless you have a proof. You know what that means? 
يعني as a believer <coughs> you need to think all the time not relying on your logic rather Quran and Sunnah يعني now you wipe your nose do you have a proof for that? you should not wipe your nose unless you have a proof. That's exactly what he said. Do not scratch your head unless you have a proof. Is there a proof for scratching your head? Yeah. We are commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to remove the harm. And there is harm that's bothering you when you do this, you remove it. So there is a proof. Now picture if you apply that to the common things that we do. How close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you will be and how far from the haram. And this is how you reach the goal that we are looking for to stay away from the haram to be from the, the most devout people. Now most of, of those things, when we talk about tabarruj, yani, uh, displaying uh, adornment and beauty for women when they don't wear the hijab or when they wear the hijab but it's not really uh, the proper hijab, <clears throat> this really reflects that women don't really look at the rewards. Yani, some people so attracted to things or like doing things and they don't look at if I don't do it or if I do it how much the reward there. Yani, uh, if I know that giving a dollar to my wife is more rewarding than giving a dollar in a different avenue why wouldn't I give my wife more dollars? Why would I spend it on the other avenue when I can do it and get more hasanat? I, a woman is told, if you pray your five daily prayers, fast Ramadan, chaste yourself, obey your husband for the married, or your father if you're not married, then you enter the Jannah from any of the eight doors. Yani, basics. It doesn't say do qiyam, it doesn't say fast Mondays and Thursdays, it doesn't say give too much charity, it doesn't say even pray sunnah. It just say do the basics and you go to Jannah. And they choose, a lot of them, choose to not be at home or to not take care of their husband or to look at that as uh, in a negative way rather than looking at it as in, in, in a spiritual way, in a rewarding way, in a loving way, they look at it in a degrading way because of the pressure of the outsiders. Uh, it, it, it amazes you and this is basically because the weakness of faith make the person do that. And look Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that the mother took three out of three when it comes to kindness from her son. The father took one. Why? Because she's a mother. Because she's a woman. Because she's a woman, she deserves the company of her son three times more than the father. Okay? So that is an honor. So anytime you obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is an honor. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you heaven is near the feet of the mother, not the father, the mother. 
Red. Why? Because she's a woman. Because she's your mother. Send her. She's mother. And your mother is a woman. So what more honor than this? Does it bother you, Sheikh? No. I never really spent time on it, worried and complaining and uh, making demonstrations and stuff like that. Uh, no, men need to have the heaven next to their feet, uh, or men need to have three times the uh, friendship or the closeness of the sun. Because these, these are teachings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave her that uh, privilege. So I'm happy for her. And I tell my son to do that. And I even warn my son when he doesn't listen to my wife. I tell him, look, the Prophet said, your mother, your mother, your mother. Look, the Prophet. And I'm proud of it and happy to do that. Why? Because I know it's rewarding. And I know this is command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for me to call for it and to encourage it is rewarding by itself. But So what, what can men do to get a king then as well? If women, all they have to do is pray, fast, and obey their husbands. You know, what, what, what about uh, what's it called? And what can we do to get them now? I don't know. You're just going to have to do a lot of work, brother. One time, Prophet uh, uh, Abu Bakr Siddiq, radiyallahu an, when the Prophet sallallahu was talking about people who enter the Jannah from the eight doors, he took the advantage of it. You know, see, when people are connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they're always ready. He said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make me one of them. He said, you are one of them. Another one, oh, me too. He said, too late. <laughs> so it's, it's amazing. When, when you are connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like I'll give you another example. Like one of the servants of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him, ask me anything you want to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is poor, he can ask for money, he can ask for marriage, he can ask for anything. He thought, he thought, what's the best thing to ask? He asked him to be his companion in Jannah. Oh, Prophet of Allah, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make me your companion in Jannah. Most of us, if we had that opportunity, we'll be thinking about worldly things. You know, what's your, what are you dreaming about to have in this dunya? But look at the Prophet ﷺ, what he told him. <clears throat> he told him, okay, but help me with too much prayer. And I'm going to ask for you, but help me pray a lot. So we accomplish that goal. Because Jannah is not by wishing and by dreaming and by asking. And why did he say prayer? Because that is the most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you feel like doing something good, pray to Raka. When the Prophet ﷺ passed by a grave, he said, if this person, dead person, do you know what he would wish for, if you ask him, to come back to this dunya and pray to Raka. That is when he sees the beauty and the reward of, and the importance of the prayer. Even the martyr does the same thing. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ask for anything, he says, oh Allah, to come back to this world and die for your sake again. Why? Because he saw what he gets. Most of us, it's a promise. Depending on your faith, your action is related to that. The more faith you have, uh, the closer you are to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more you believe it, the farther, the least you believe it, and so forth. 
So Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, <coughs> or before that, also wealth, money. This is a test, and this is actually our test. The Ummah of Muhammad, the biggest test for us is money. You're surprised, right? Money. But look around you. If you have family problems, if you have friendship problems, if you have partnership problems, if you have, check it out. It's all related to money. Majority of it is because of money. Why these two people divorced? Money. Why these two partners splitting? Money. Why they're going to court? Money. Why they fighting? Money, money, money. And that's what the Prophet Sallallahu told us. Now Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala told us that we love money too much. Who doesn't love money? If you tell me you don't, you're not telling the truth. Now you can tell me I'm not, I don't love money to the point that I will involve myself in haram. Wonderful. It's good. It's supposed to be this way. We love money too much, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came and he told us how to get it and how to spend it and put rules for that. So this love is controlled by that. I love to get more money, but I have to get involved in haram. No. If you believe and you know that it's written for you how much you're going to get, why would you want to involve yourself in haram and you know you're going to get it in halal if you don't? But what's the difference? Patience. Because halal mathan, you got a job. And this job is haram. You decline. For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You applied for another job. You didn't get it. Halal job, you didn't get it. So you sit for three months or so, no money. You start running out of patience. You know, I should have took that job before, you know. You know, this is how life is nowadays. It's very thing is haram, you know. It's very hard, you know, who's going. And you start finding excuses for yourself because you ran out of patience. And you are so close, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is writing for you, in four months you're going to get the job. And you're going to get a job and make up the money that you have lost there and pay up and catch and everything but you are so close to getting the job you ran out of patience that's why the prophet sallallahu told us that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that he laughs allah subhanahu wa ta'ala amazed that his servant knows that when he is so despairing when he is despairing and he knows the relief is right there. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, in the ma'al usri with hardship comes relief. And the harder it gets, the closer you are for the relief. Because we, we got it from the Quran. When it gets so hard to the point that you see biting, right? And one is biting the other and the stronger person lasted and the other one gave up. The stronger person told him, if you held for one second, you would have won. I was give up. <laughs> Can you imagine if you knew it, you would hold it for one second. But you don't. You thought, go, khalas, I'm out, and he's not there. So when you know that hardship is there, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, comes for you for the relief. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah told us that the doors for haram are seven. The doors for haram are seven, like the doors for hell. How many doors for hell? Seven. Seven. Smart, mashallah, that's good conclusion. <laughs> How many doors for heaven? Eight. Eight. So the doors for hell, al lisan, the tongue, the private, the ear, 
eyes, stomach, hands, feet. Al-lisan, al-farj, al-udhun, al-nadar, al-batn, al-yad, al-qadr. These are the doors of haram, seven. Yani, you could say all the haram comes because of things related to these. That's what Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, said. Inshallah, next time we'll talk about the seven haram doors. Scared. Because when you say the hell has seven doors, and these are the doors of Haram. Well, we can stay on Sajjah if you want. Any questions, young man? Fajr, Fajr. Fajr? Yeah. That's a question? Yeah. What's the question? Say it again. Why can't we stay until Fajr? Why can't we stay until Fajr? Because uh, Prophet وسلم, taught us that to take things easy and not to overburden ourselves and the religion, if you want to tackle it, tackle it easy. Meaning, smoothly go in it because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not get tired of you learning and getting hasanat, you will. His wife, radiallahu anha, she had a string, a rope held between two posts. And he said, what is this? And they said, this is for, I believe, but I don't remember her name, I think Zainab. But the Allah and he said when she gets tired she prays Qiyam, when she gets tired she holds on to it so she doesn't fall. Yeah, and she's too sleepy. He said, break. Take from do the actions or do actions that you can bear and can handle. Don't overdo it. Allah will never get tired of rewarding you. You will, and you will start not liking the worship because it becomes a burden instead of an enjoyment. So staying until Fajr, number one is a cute one. I know you don't mean it, but we'll answer you. Any questions? Can you do? Can men wear like cologne in public? Is there any? Ahsan, that's a good question. A lot of people wonder about that. Women cannot wear alcohol, uh, I mean alcohol. <laughs> cannot wear uh, perfume in public. Men, it's a sunnah to wear. And the reason is, the reason is, men are created for the public. They're always there. Work there, prayer there, janaza, everything. So most of their time is there and they are mixing with men. Therefore, they wear it. Now, you may ask that question or you ask that question because nowadays men and women mix. And that is wrong, of course, but we cannot eliminate the one who has the permission because of the presence of someone who doesn't have permission. Yeah, I'm supposed to be here. And I'm supposed to wear perfume. Perfume? Sah? Or oh, tool perfume, what's the difference? Cologne. Cologne. Cologne, brothers, is not good. So, you are commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you leave your house to dress modestly and to not put anything that has a smell that yani, diffuses when you pass by another person by in a wind or something like that you can wear some uh, yani, uh, things that has uh, stationary uh, odor that, that doesn't 
diffuse where if you pass by someone, then behind you there would be a smell. But locally, it can have a smell, it's okay. For men, they have to wear that. In fact, the Prophet ﷺ, when not they have to, and it's a sunnah, he said when you go to the masjid in particular, he said on Salat al Jum'ah, anyone who dresses his best, the best of his clothes and touches some perfume from his home, and then you know, he mentioned going out. So because men are meant to be out there, that is the reason, and also the the temptation from the perfume or the cologne of men on women is no comparison to women on men. What's the proof? Besides the reality, it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow this and this allow that. That's, that's good enough proof to know that. If there is any real danger or temptation from that, he would not allow it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ta'ib. Remember, like, like, like so, a lot of people would, would say the same thing, just like, just like uh, you work in a place as a man, and you're not supposed to mix and all of that and situations becomes extremely hard because a lot of women work there what do you do who is on true who, who's coming on who this is where the man's supposed to be the woman is not supposed to be there the woman is supposed to be taken care of by the man and that's why you cannot even marry unless you are able to spend. That's what the dowry is all about. You know what the dowry is for? To tell the woman, I'm a man. I can take care of you and me. That's what the significance of the dowry. So the man has to go out and women come over there. We cannot tell him, oh, astaghfirullah, you're mixing. You need to quit your job and go sit at home. And let, we cannot. He's supposed to be there. So the way that life that we are living in nowadays makes it difficult for men to adhere to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because some people are not adhering to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm supposed to be here and someone else not supposed to be here. If he comes here, Maybe he can or she can, but she needs to be dressing properly. She needs to be uh, watching her uh, yani limits, uh, doing all of that. And a lot of them don't do that. It's sad, but this is a reality. Question? Jazakum Allahu khayran. Al Hussein, damn it, you read texts and smile. I was wondering, back when we were in Urban, you used to always teach us that at the end of a lesson you would say SubhanAllah all the time, they, you know, the whole thing. Shadow, Nada, right, I didn't, I didn't do that? I didn't finish yet. Oh. I'm just saying, any questions? Okay. Actually, I was Jazakallahu Khair. You're Ijil, you know what Ijil is? A calf. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك جزاك الله خيرا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته